Hello students, welcome to Reddy's classes. I hope all the 9th standard ICS students have started with their uh, school online classes and you might be very busy with your classes as well. And now I have taken an opportunity to serve you with your English classes as well from our Reddy's classes. Uh, let's begin with something like this that uh, coming to 9th standard English that you know that it's of two parts English 1 and 2 one is of literature right and you also have uh, Merchant of Venice right it's a, one of the surprising and romantic comedy novel that you really enjoy in 9th standard and coming to the English 2 that is with uh, you have prose and poetry collections and you have wonderful poetry collections which gives a subtle and meaningful messages to us right uh, the main purpose of you know keeping these poems in ninth standard is definitely to deliver a message that you can follow in our daily life and each and every poem that is given in the ninth standard icac uh, poetry section are uh, very relevant to our modern times especially many of the poems are written some century ago a century old poems which are written so 100 years ago in 19th century 19th century as well in the beginning of 20th century as well uh, but why they are we are reading this now things is because these poems are relevant to some problems of our present times now let's start with the first poem of your the ninth standard icc english 2 that is the heart of the tree that i would like to say that what do you mean by the heart of the tree? Uh, before starting with the heart of the tree, I would like to say that uh, how many of you really like, uh, you know, just watching a big tree in front of your house, uh, which is quite not possible in Mumbai. But if you go to your village side or to your grandparents' village side or countryside, or especially during the summer holidays, you get a bountiful pleasure when you see a big trees in your grandma's yard and you just move and like to sit under the trees, right? And you feel that greatness, it's kindness of your grandparents that they arranged all these big trees for you and your forefathers have, might have started this you know, plantation in that old house of your ancestors and your father tells a lot of stories, right? So for a quick minute in your old house of your village, but the moment you go to a village site, you get an immense pleasure, a bountiful freedom. That is, what a nice tree is this, which you never experience in a city like Mumbai. But right, when you go to your societies also here, when you find two or three big trees, you see that amazing tree and you look with passion at the tree, right? That's your heart that you feel for the tree and you feel the tree is for you, right? You find, you try to connect yourself with the tree, a, 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 an unexplainable relationship with the tree, right? That's what is put in this poem, the first poem, the heart of the tree, right? Guys, we have come to know about great people on this earth. Uh, why to talk about the people who won Nobel Prize? In India, we know that who started Chipko movement, to save the trees from man's, what do you call that? I can't say man's molestation, man's immoral activity of cutting down the trees and disturbing the balance and ecosystem of the nature. Then it was Sundarlal Bahuguna who started Chipko movement and he gave a call to Adivasis and tribal people of India that you go and hug a tree. If somebody is coming and trying to cut a tree, then we will see if he has to cut down the tree, first he has to cut you into pieces. The common tribal people of India got inspired with this call and when the foresters or the Britishers or some of the Indian foresters they come to cut down the tree, the tribals went and hugged the tree and avoided them, fainted them to cut down the tree. Can we cut a man before to cut a tree? We can't, right? So it's an emotional call that was given by Sundarlal Bhoguna. And there was another man called uh, Forest Man of India uh, Mr. Jadav Payeng, a poor farmer, the poorest of the poorest farmer in Assam, who changed a sandy area of uh, aside the other side of the river Brahmaputra into a big forest. Hectares, hundreds of hectares of forest was developed by a common man in just three decades. Why I'm telling you all these things? These people have become the hearts of trees by showing their responsibility to the earth, showing their love to the mankind, showing their civic responsibility and giving their love to the neighborhood. And you know, if I plant a tree, I am not planting just a tree, but I am planting a home for birds. I am planting, I'm planting a home for insects. I am planting a home for neighborhood, right? I am planting a beautiful ecosystem. 
that's what all the poem says the poem is a, it's, it's very simple words that are used by uh, henry keller bernard american poet and novelist and he simply writes but the heart of the tree he explains about the plantation of trees so what does it mean sir it's just plantation we all do the governments always carry these activities every year yes you are right you are there but here the poet has not shown just planting a tree by you or by me is not a common act but it is a great act yes it looks like a common activity planting a tree is a common activity to maintain the ecosystem and environmental balance we do because governments call us nowadays to do all these activities but what i say here is that the poet through this poem 100 years ago in 1912 had written this poem and he tried to show that planting a tree is a glorified act it's a great act a man who plants a tree is a great man he is trying to show the poet is trying to show the activity of planting a tree is a great activity and as a responsibility and as your love towards the nature neighborhood and to the whole system as well right now the coming to this poem is a three stanza poem with nine lines each right and uh to say that this is the what do you call that the rhyming scheme as you all know that the rhyming scheme is a b a b b c c a a rhyming scheme it's against to spencerian style of uh, what do you call that uh, scheming system now if you see this the poetry uh, yes everybody if you know the poem you just if you read the poem you can understand but the beauty of the poem lies the way what the poet conveys us telling the story of bahubali in my style is different but telling the story from a poet's words on the screen the bahubali is a different skin right because it's all the director who portrays the picture in a live contrast right which the common man can't do right in the same way if you look at the poem what does the the see that every line starts with a question what does he plan to plant a tree he plants a friend of sun and sky so the question every stanza is starting with a question students listen this what does he plan to plant a tree it's a question but immediately the poet himself is giving an answer in the next lines for his own question so this kind of style is called a rhetorical question or in english in figures of speech you call it as a hypophora i for a this is kind of this is called a rhetorical question where the question carries an answer right so you see this now let's go the totally the theme of the poem is that he is explaining the beauty of a tree the relationship of man with the nature right and the importance of a tree and the greatness of a man who plants these trees for neighborhood and as is as is civic responsibility now let's go to the poem now what does he plan to plant a tree he plants a friend of sun and sky he plants the flag of breezes free the shaft of beauty towering high he plants a home to heaven and i for song and mother coon of bird in hushed and happy twilight heard the trouble of heaven's harmony these things he plants who plants a tree so he says that what does he plant he plant all these things so it's a question put by the poet himself and this is the answer given by himself is called hypophora style of poetry where the poet put the question and gives the answer himself now let's go the details of the first stanza the first stanza totally explains the importance of the trees by telling that how important a plant is in man's life not only for man for all the creatures what does he plant who plants a tree yes he plants a friend of sky he is not just is just not planting a tree guys he is planting a friend of sun and sky so you call that sir yes it's a friend a tree is a friend to sun and sky right how can you say so that sir you know he plants the flag of breezes free because as the plant grows and grows like a tower grows up and as if it want to touch the sun and sky as if it is their friend 
right and it makes a sun friend to us because the sun what, what does a tree do after growing up to the sky high in the sky it absorbs the heat of the sun and protects us from the scorching sunlight from the burning sunlight so in this way by making friendship with sun and sky and taking its light and heat and protecting us it makes us to feel that sun is my friend the sky is my friend so it stands like a flag post like a poem of a flag right he plants a friend so the man who plants a tree is not planting a tree but is planting a friend of sun and sky he plants the flag of breezes free the old tree he calls a flag. what is that all many branches many branches carrying full of flush green leaves and moving here and there for the wind calls as a flag of breezes cool winds which comes across the mountains and touches you and solaces you and relieves you from the heat are nothing but the flags so he is comparing the twigs and small branches so this is what i mean to say he plants the flag of a tree so the branches having lots of leaves are compared to flags and the shaft of beauty what is the shaft the trunk of the beauty the beautiful big tree growing like a flag and post the pole which is carrying the flags so all these branches are a trunk so he says he compares the total tree as a big pole or a flag post and carrying many flags carrying a cool winds and the shaft of beauty the trunk itself is a shaft of beauty towering high growing high into the sky he plants a home to heaven and i you know what is the man planting here this man he plants not a tree but he is planting a home a home to heaven very close guys here anai anai means very close to heaven so i just now said how is this plant growing the plant growing like a big tree high into the sky into the heaven so where is heaven really we see heaven because everybody we think that where is heaven heaven is in the sky somewhere in the sky this is just like a metaphor right comparison so you just say that as a plant grow high into the heaven he is making a plant just like a home to into heaven a very close for song and mother crown of birds what to whom is making a home the poet here by planting a very big tree which is close to heaven very close anai to heaven and is making a big home right for birds for birds for song and mother croon of bird what is a croon a soft low voice of song sung in troubles mm -hmm. or into the love of the heart of the deepest of the seas the calls the tra la 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 so this kind of soft tunes which comes from a mother bird is compared to the songs of the heaven so he just plans a heaven a home which is very close to heaven to songs just like and these you know a home where the birds sit and sing soft songs for the young birds and these songs sung by mother the soft tunes of mother birds are close to the songs that come from heaven the soft music of heaven is compared to the soft croons of the mother birds in hushed and happy twilight heard in hushed in silent and twilight skies what do you mean by twilight it's not twilight students it's twilight the soft time between the day break when the sun rises first at the 4 o'clock the day breaks and slowly you see the horizon slowly 6 o'clock 7 o'clock and then at 8 o'clock you see the full sunrise right the time before the day breaks and sun rises completely is called twilight or the time between the sunset starts and total night falls is called twilight so in between this twilight you hear you find a total nature is silent 
dead silence in that silence you see the mother croon songs for a bird young birds which is comparable to the songs of the celestial songs which come from heaven right the treble of heaven's harmony the low the shivering voice the low acoustics the low voice songs of heaven's harmony the harmonious the peaceful atmosphere of heaven is compared these things to the these heavens harmony is compared to the twilight on the earth when bird sings with low voices when the heavens voices come down in the twilight skies that is when the day breaks or day ends in that particular all these things a mother's songs heaven songs and twilight atmosphere all is compared to the heavens harmony and all these things are planted by man all these things are planted by man so don't think that the first stanza says that what does he plant he plants a friend to sun and sky he plant a habitable home to birds and other creatures he plants a happy heaven to all of us in this way he says that what does he plant the poet says that he is not just planting a plant tree but he is planting a friend to all of us so by this stanza he explains the importance of trees and the beauty and the holistic nature of the nature by using the words an eye by using the words twilight by using the words heaven all these words tell how beautiful and holistic the nature is now let's go to the second stanza so let's come back to the second stanza as we said that you know it again starts a rhetorical question that this is called hypophora you remember that i said in the first stanza what does he plan to plant a tree he plants a friend of sun and sky all these things again he says that and the subsequent lines for his question gives the answer the what is he plant so what else he is planting in the first time that we learned that he planted not just a tree but a friend to sky and friend to sun and a habitual place to tree to uh, birds and other creatures and lots of benefits for us and now he says that he plants cool shade and tender rain cool shade and soft rain so he is not just planting a tree these plants in future grows and gives us shade these plants in future grows into trees and brings rain by attracting the clouds with the lowest temperatures as per the science you know that well right so he says that he is not planting tree he is planting future rains he is planting the tender rains right and seed and bud of days to be guys seed and bud and fruits you know these these plants when they grow do they sit quietly and sleep like us and you in pandemic corona times no a tree always keeps growing and working till its last breath or till you cut it down right i see tree here keeps on growing once it grows and mature starts producing seeds buds fruits and these fruits come out and once you eat or the birds eat the fallen down seeds they fall down and they grow we all the man who planted this tree and the people like us who saw these trees growing we all die after some time but these trees they never perish they continue their growth by with the help of seeds and buds again new trees are grown again up into the sky to like a friend for the sun and sky providing a habitual flags and habitable place for the trees so for birds right like this they continue in the form of seed and buds and in the days to come in the days to be they all keep growing though we all die and years that fade and flush again years come and pass by fade they die all these present times they die and become past but the trees grow again in the form of seeds and buds he plants the glory of the plain hey guys he is not just planting the tree he is planting the greatness of the plains you know if i plant 10 seeds if i plant just 10 seeds in a plain area but there are no trees at all it's just looking like a dry dead desert but if you see the place after four or five years you will see the grown up trees and even a long dry pastures can be make it can be made into a small forest a heaven like forest where all the birds start coming and living and men and women and people come and start taking its fruits and animals come and live over there 
right so a man who plants trees is not planting tree but he is planting the greatness of changing a, a dry plain into a lush green plains so he is just plant, planting not a tree but a lush green greatness of a plains by changing a desert areas into a plantation right and he is planting the harvest of a coming age he is not just planting a tree but he is harvesting he is planting the harvest the crop that comes then you reap a crop in the coming ages i may not see and you may not see but the next generation they will definitely enjoy the harvest and they look at the gigantic beauty of the trees and they enjoy the vegetation and they enjoy the harvest because they exactly enjoy the benefits of the trees the joy that unborn i shall say that was i said the unborn eyes guys what a beautiful word here sir the children who are yet to be born in the future i plant a tree but i might die my children may see but my my children may die but even their children who are unborn who are yet to be born not it open their eyes guys unborn eyes what a beautiful figures of speech unborn eyes shall see all right these things he plants who plants a tree so what is he planting in the second stanza he is planting not a tree he is planting a cool shade he is planting a drain he is planting seeds and buds and he is planting again which grows again and again he is planting the glory of the plain he is planting a lush green forest the future forest he is not just planting a tree he is planting the future forest and is just planting the forest heritage what is heritage that you inherit from a, a building or a property that you get from your father is heritage or your you inherit a property you know in this country we have a great monuments like palaces in rajasthan ashoka pillar nandala nalanda university 2000 years old takshila university the south indian temples and what do you call that the heritage that you see the heritage the uh, saptagiri what is that that uh, what do you call this sahyadri hills right the gods all these are the ancestral property we inherit this heritage these trees which is planting is a heritage we are getting right and we all shall see that these things he plants who plants a tree right so remember that this stanza explains the importance of planting trees the stanza one explains the importance of trees and the relationship and here in second stanza explains the importance of planting trees you get all these benefits right let's go to the second third stanza the final one let's come to the third stanza students and the third stanza again starts as we said that the literary device that hypophora that it starts with the rhetorical question what is he plan to plant a tree he plants in sap and leaf and wood that leaves muzzle of the plant and the wood of that is the future wood and the future leaf everything is planting and this is useful for all of us in love of home and loyalty why does he do all these things man that man who is planting tree he is doing with loyalty obedience as yes, i have to be i have to be very honest and i have to show my responsibility that is a loyalty obedience to this because if i am born in this house for example you are born to your parents so you have to show loyalty and love to your parents right if i am working as a for some office i have to show loyalty to my college or my school in the same way as he got life on this earth as he has been enjoying the poet has been and or the man who is planting trees has been enjoying the fruits and seeds and lot of wood and he built his house probably with the wood of a tree so you want to give back to this atmosphere to this ecology to this environment so with lot of loyalty to this earth because this mother earth gave me plants trees fruit shelter and an ecological balance and a best environment to live so i have to give back something to this earth with love because if you take something from your parents after growing back and if you settle in your life you give back something to your parents life right what do you give back to your parents your love your care right sharing and now you give caring right the same policy sharing is caring so he plants in sap and leaf and wood and in love with great love on this earth he shows loyalty by putting down the seeds the future trees and forecast sort of civic good he thought of he doing all these things by thinking his civic responsibility 
civic sense with responsibility right and his blessings on the neighborhood what does he do he is just not planting a tree but he is planting blessings on the neighbor because as a human being man is a social animal he cannot think so selfishly and you think that only i can exist alone i don't want anyone neighbors or someone else caste color creed keep all these things aside but i need another human being for my existence right we all need one another so for his neighbors he is showing his blessings he is planting not a tree but he is planting blessings who who in the hollow of his hand in the hollow of his hand he is holding that love he is holding the responsibility he is holding that wood of future and that loyalty to the earth he is holding all in his hand holds all the growth all of our land so whoever whichever the man whoever the man is planting a tree he is holding our future he is holding our future generations from sea to sea because he knows that a nation's growth a nation's growth depends on the trees from sea to sea from end to one end of the oceans deep into the borders of the country you see that a nation's strength lies a nation's growth lies in the growth of trees right and that thought stirs in his heart the very deep that every nation's growth depends on trees that kind of the love of neighborhood love and loyalty towards the mother earth and his civic responsibility always stirs in his heart come on man plant a tree today come on man you have a loyalty you have to show your loyalty you have to show blessings to your neighborhood you have to show the love towards the neighborhood and you have to show the understand that a nation's strength is a plant so you keep all these thoughts stir in his heart who plants a tree the last line is very important students that last line that all these things always stay in his mind my responsibility my civic responsibility my loyalty my love my blessings to neighborhood my next generations and the birds and animals ecosystem and environmental environment all these things makes him to feel in his heart deep and that's why he plants a tree you can find that everywhere the his the the he and h are capitalized they are written in capital letters it shows that he is the man who plants a tree for all of us and for future generations is just like a godly activity so he is compared to god and is it is capitalized telling that the man who plants a tree is all powerful and he is a destiny maker for us so we have to get inspired from this simple poem with simple words but they give a lucrative attractive and expressive meaning about the future generations but understand one thing why this poem is relevant to nowadays sir yes rapid industrialization urbanization makes at all to the environment and best of the future we just neglecting everything so to make a message to all of you this is poem is an all time message all generation message though written in published in 1912 still this poem is relevant to the modern times because still the rapid urbanization is going on and on right so guys understand the relationship between man and nature responsibility of a man and the great work of plantation is explained so you see so if you plant a tree you are a catalyst human being if you plant a tree you are the friend of this nature and if you plant a tree like sundarlal bahuguna or jadav of assam who is a forest man of india we all become the heart of the trees so you are the heart of the tree if you plant a tree i am the heart of the tree if i plant a tree right and let's understand this and understand the poetic devices also in just quick and one minute we'll go to the poetic devices and the uh, uh, what are the things figures of speech used in this poem okay so guys let's see the figures of speech that some literary devices that were used in this a uh, common there were nearly 10 or something like that but overall the major figures of speech that were in the ninth standard he says i'm going to discuss that now here we see alliteration you can see that alliteration is repetition of you know the sounds that is per in plan per in plans you see this repetition this repetition is called alliteration but repetition of uh, vowels and repetition of consonants is different you know the assonance right and now you can see that metaphor a direct comparison comparison flags what are flags 
comparing the branches to flags are nothing but metaphors comparing the shaft that is the shaft the trunk of the tree to a towering tower is called a metaphor now comes the metonymy what is metonymy so students again we'll come to metonymy i repeat the question what is metonymy metonymy is something that represents something for example see it's not metaphor it looks it looks like a metaphor but i say here in this poem the poet compares heaven to sky because normally our elders say that where is heaven up somewhere in the sky so as he says the trees grow taller and taller touching the sky to be a friend of sky every tree right to be a friend of sun and sky so as the tree grows up the birds also live there that means the birds feel that they are spending their life near very near to heaven that's why you see this flag of trees a plant's home to heaven and i very close to heaven so here here heaven means do you think that the really all the birds the plant which he, the plant the tree which he plants which grows very tall to sky and where the birds sit on the top of that and croon sing a song do you think that the birds sing at heaven no that means the tree the tree is very tall and the bird which is crooning for its young bird sitting on the top of the branch of the topmost apex of the tree which looks like as if it is touching the sky so that's why i said that touch it so such song singing on the top of the world is just like a feeling of heaven right so every bird feels that yeah i am sitting on heaven and looking on the earth and just singing songs for my young birds right so that feeling he compares that sky to heaven right so that's what and very close so that's why thing which is compared here is called metonymy right it's not even the sky is heaven metaphor the sky is like heaven what is that simile but here no other word is used but simply it is a substitute a word which is used to as a substitute to another word or another phrase is called metonymy i hope i am clear here the next comes polysyndeton what is polysyndeton uh somewhere you see that bud and, and seed and bird and rain right and seed and bud right shared and tender the close repetition the close repetition of conjunctions closely within one word gap again the conjunction repeated such a repetition close repetition of conjunctions is called polysyndeton right now coming to transfer epithet if we go transfer epithet i really don't see that can we just go up somewhere here uh, yeah you see this wow hey you can all this this is another metonymy you see this guys unborn eyes what are eyes here eyes are nothing but the children right unborn eyes children who are not yet born will see these trees in future and they get the joy for this harvest right here eyes represent a child the old body of a child is represented to an eye so here eyes are a substitute used to represent a child so can we call this as metonymy yes and next comes transfer epithet uh, here i don't find yes n n n it's another polysyndeton right now exactly looking for this i would like to say that a uh, harvest of coming age i would like to find a word yes exactly happy twilight this is transfer epithet guys what is twilight i said twilight is a time between daybreak and sunrise or a time a cool time between a silent hushy time silent time between the sunset and nightfall time between daybreak and sunrise or the time between sunset and night falls is called twilight so what kind of twilight twilight means that hour twilight a twilight is sorry i'm sorry it's twilight twilight is that particular hour what twilight what twilight happy twilight happy is an adjective of noun twilight right what is an adjective sir so what does it mean sir an adjective which is qualifying a noun though it is describing some other thing is called 
transferred epithet. It's transferred epithet. Right? I repeat, an adjective which is qualifying a noun, which is actually describing some other thing, is called transferred epithet. Right? So these are the general figures of speech you find in this poem. So guys, I always tell you that uh, figures of speech are not for grammatical purpose or for score. Figures of speech for to make your speech lucrative, attractive and to make your English with special effects. So please always use these figures of speech, this kind of in a poetic sense when you speak poetically or when you are explanatory on something else, right? So thank you for watching and just go through the number of times you can watch the video and have an idea and please maintain the gist always in your mind. Just when I say the poem, the heart of the tree, then you have to understand. So again, I repeat, all this he represents the powerful and destiny maker. That is a man who plants a tree is just like a godly act. So a man who does all these heavenly godly activities is very powerful. So he is represented with capitalized H in all the stanzas, right? Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Let's go to the next poem in the next session, right? Have a nice time.